Hi everyone, GW Fox here. This is the Model Gaming Show coming to you with the final day of E3 press conference stuff with Nintendo. Uh, just to preface this, I did not really get into the Treehouse live stuff. I just didn't have time to watch it. It's like a whole day thing and I do have a job. So uh, I was able to watch the Direct, which was you know about 40 minutes or so. And they really... Um, double down on uh, the, the on the Treehouse Live, like on all their games and just live demos of all their games, right? Everything that they announced. But uh, let's just do a run through what I thought was impactful, what I didn't think, what's not for me, all that good stuff. So they opened with a new game called Damon X Machina. It's like a cool robot co-op action game. Uh, nice short trailer, maybe like a minute and a half two minutes, not short trailer, minute and a half, two minutes, just showing the action and what looks like gameplay. It looks cool. I'm, I'm definitely interested and uh, and it's exciting that something like that's coming to the Switch. Looks like multiplayer heavy, or at the very least co-op. Um, thought it looked great. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, DLC, Torna the Golden Country, which comes out September 2018. Uh, it looks like an, it's, it's, uh, I did a little bit more following up on this one, and it's actually like going to be released as a standalone thing. It it looked like an it kind of, it looked like a proper expansion, right? Almost like a Blood and Wine, like The Witcher Three, where it could be 20 to 20 or 10 to 25 hours of gameplay, which that's a game in and of itself. Um, looks cool. I, I don't have the I don't have that game. Um, that series has never really interested me and I can't sink, you know, 80 hours into a game right now, uh, like that. So maybe I'll get around to it in the future, but for now, um, looks like a cool game and I know Xenoblade, uh, uh, enthusiasts are excited for it. The next is coming out on October 5th and that is Super Mario Party. Uh, I want to state right up front, I have never liked any Mario Party games. Uh, they're basically just bad mini games all thrown together into a compilation and it's complete luck who wins. Uh, there's no skill involved whatsoever and it's just by chance. Um, so I, I don't care. Not for me. Great. I know people love Mario Party. Um, I never even played it with friends. We always played uh, Smash or Mario Kart or something like that that you had a little bit more skill involved because Mario Party was... Just pure luck, pure chance. Um, it looks fun. Some of the mini games do look cool, but again, not for me. Comes out on October 5th. Fire Emblem Three Houses um, comes to the Switch. I've never played a Fire Fire Emblem title. This looks pretty cool. It's like a it's like a tactical game, but then when you choose your actions, it goes into the battle like 3D characters and you know, you can see the outcome of it. I really like that. It looks like you have a 3D model running around towns. Um, it looks like there's boss battles, which is cool in like a tactical game. Like usually you don't get that. Usually it's just, it's just fights, but it's, uh, it looks like there's these cool massive boss battles. Um, it's a ways off though. Spring 2019, which technically is like now. So you could get anywhere from, uh, you know, March to May technically for spring. So we got a while. So we got a, uh, you know, Nine months to a year to go on that one. Um, they had two shadow drops today, and really, they're only shadow drops for the Switch. I'm not excited about them at all. I've already played one of them, and I have no interest in the other. Uh, I know they're going to be games people are looking forward to, but at this point in my life, I have so many games in my back catalog, I don't have time to go replay old games. So, uh, I did a full playthrough stream of this game. Um, some of the audio is bad on some of it. It was in the in the early days when I didn't have my shit together. And that's Hollow Knight, which is available today, and Fortnite, which is available today. Already played and beat Hollow Knight. Good, challenging, frustrating game, but good. It was tough, and I was going to say but fair, but sometimes it wasn't. So, uh Sometimes I didn't know where I was going. It was a little bit frustrating. And for the type of game that was, I thought the length was too long. It was like 25 hours or something like that for that kind of game, too long. Um, Fortnite, I don't really need to say anything more about Fortnite, do I? It's a phenomenon. Uh, it looks like it runs perfectly fine on the Switch and it's gonna be cool to take that on the go. Cool. Uh, this game called Killer Queen, Killer Queen Black. It looks like a sports game where you're taking balls and putting them on the other side 
um, uh, you know, adding them up. Looks cool. Um, definitely something I'd be interested in playing. And it's like a remaster, right? It's like an updated version. Apparently it's pretty big in arcades. So that's cool. Um, into it, into, into it for sure. Um, but I don't know when I'm going to have time to get around to, to playing that uh, for the Switch. Uh, it's not really flying high in my radar here. So um, next game is Overcooked 2. Comes out August 7th. The first one looked like tons of fun, and uh, I really wanted to play it with my sister, but never got a chance to. And, uh, uh, you know, that definitely is a great party game. You get four people all doing it. Um, I don't know four people with Switches, so I, I don't know if I'll be, be getting it, but uh, it looks very, very fun. Um, finally, the game that I've been anticipating for a long time, definitely going to be a purchase uh, day one, is Octopath Traveler. Uh, it's coming out July 13th, and they're releasing a new demo on Ju June 14th, which is weird because, so basically, apparently, from... The old demo and this one, your save states, once you purchase the game, will actually be active in the in the new game. I don't know if I want to play this new demo or have my old save state, considering I played it last year and I have no idea what the hell's going on anymore. So I'll pro pro probably just play it from the very beginning. But it looks fun. Um, the game looks, the visual style is incredible. The combat was cool. Uh, the characters were great, the two that I played. I'm, I'm intrigued. I've only played it for an hour and 40 minutes, but definitely got me intrigued, and it's probably going to be a day one purchase uh, for me, something that I'm going to put uh, some hours into. Really excited for that. So, a lot of games right now. It's cool. I'm surprised they didn't show anything from Mario at uh, Aces, Tennis Aces, Aces Tennis, whatever that is, uh, simply because it comes out in two weeks. I get it. But at the same time, I don't get it. It'd be a perfect chance to just show some more stuff um, about it, just to do like a sizzle reel, something like that, to get people hyped for it. But nothing. I know they had it on the show floor, so maybe that's why. Uh, they really then took a deep dive into Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which is what they said they were going to do. That's the thing, is Nintendo brought more than they said they were going to do. They basically said, hey, we're going to bring Smash and that's it. And you got a couple of cool new games, a couple of... Uh, uh, games available today i mean i i think it was an okay press conference before i get into super smash i think it was an okay press conference and i think super smash really took the deep dive that it needed to bring it up um i still think it's weaker than microsoft's sony's and ubisoft's but it's still good it wasn't a bad pre press conference by any mean means uh, it was a good length about 40 minutes and um they really showed a lot of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I'm going to go over some pros and cons of what I thought right now. Um, Masahiro Sakurai came out. He's been the guy doing it this whole time. And he was very frank, which is cool. Really blunt about the processes and everything and how much work they that went into it. Um, comes out December 7th of this year. Kind of a main holiday game just before, just before Christmas. Uh, that thing's going to sell bananas. Um, I, I really think I will buy it. But it just sucks because I, I really, again, I don't have many friends with the Switch. So it's like I, I'd love to play local co-op, but, you know, um, you know, I'm at an age where not too many friends are coming over to play video games anymore. Uh, what they've done, so pros, definitely. All 64 characters that have ever been in it are there. And that includes the new character of the Inkl Inkling twins, uh, the guy and the girl. And you can be both of them. And then they added a new character, which was the big thing, which is Ridley from Samus. Ridley's cool. It's cool to have something that fantastical in the game. I really actually like that. It's like, it's like a super dragon, which is cool. You don't really have any other characters like that, that alien, right? At the same time, you already have Samus. You already have Zero Suit Samus. Uh, there wasn't another franchise you could be brought in. There was rumors of... Uh, Simon Belmont from Castlevania coming in. That would be a great gameplay with the whip and everything, a lot that you could do. Uh, Sakurai basically said, hey, with all these characters that we've put in here and all the little tweaks and everything that we've done, uh, don't expect too many more characters. Um, so, th and this roster includes like all the DLC characters from the Wii U, like Cloud and Bayonetta. Uh, Ice Climbers are back. Really cool character updates, from simple things to more extensive things. Uh, on existing characters, like for instance, Link is now, um, you've got every version of Link, Toon Link, Young Link, and now this Breath of the Wild Link. New stages, ton of stages. I mean, 
what they said, so this is really funny, right? This is a con. Changes could number in the tens of thousands, which is like ridiculous, right? How can you even make a statement, a hypothetical statement like that? Who the hell knows? It's unquantifiable. Really, really funny. Still glad they said it. Um, I just thought it was great. Um, uh, for me, okay, so it's, co it's called Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And for me and for the looks, it essentially looks like a greatest hits of Super Smash Brothers. Hey, let's throw everything in there. And while that is cool, there was one new innovation um, uh, in terms of like diagonally striking and whatnot. So there is some mechanic changes and they have fixed some few things, but it definitely feels like a greatest hits more than like, hey, we're revamping it. It's gonna be new. There's a bunch of new characters. Um, here you go. This is more like a, yo, greatest hits. Let's get everything going. And um, yeah, so that, that for me is kind of like a con because it's just like, I've played that game on the Wii U and the Wii and it doesn't seem like too much has changed. So it's a little frustrating. I get why they've done it. It, it, it does feel a more of a Super Mario or Mario Kart 8 kind of thing, like a remaster where they upgraded everything, threw, threw in the whole kitchen sink and everything, then a new game. Um, the graphics do look great. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to be a fantastic game. I know that. Um, you can still use the damn WaveBird controller. Um, but at the same time, there's really no innovation in it. Uh, but enough harping on it. It looks fantastic. I'm going to buy it. I know I'm going to buy it and play the crap out of it uh, when it comes out. So yeah, that, that's it for Nintendo. Um, watched uh, sporadically Treehouse Live. While it was good, to be honest, there's just so many things to cover. I watched some Smash Brothers. I watched some Splatoon 2. They all looked fantastic. Um, the layout for Smash Brothers actually looks pretty damn clean. It looks better than it's ever been. Like the character cards and everything like that. Like they really made the menus look nice and uh, yeah, it, it looks really fun. Um, so that, that's going to do it for me. Uh, that's it. All the press conferences are done. There's three more days of E3 uh, um, where if you're there, you're on the floor, you're having a good time. But uh, that's going to be it for me. Uh, next Sunday, the model gaming show for the model gaming show, I'm going to kind of do my highlights of the show. I, I want some time to reflect on what really made an impact and get past the hype. I'm usually pretty good at distancing myself from the hype, but I want to highlight a few things on why, and maybe that's changed. Maybe I think about the conferences and they change in my mind. I, I just want to do a reflection. Of course, I'll do any new news that's come out, but it's E3 week, so nothing's coming out. Uh, so yeah, uh, maybe, maybe I'll, what I'll do is, uh, I'll do the show earlier and do a, like a, a playthrough of a game or something like that, just to uh, just to have some fun, just to fill some fill some content, you know, um, have have a little fun with it. But uh, thank you again. I'm G W Fox F A W K E S. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter. Please give me a follow here if you like what you're seeing. Uh, you can find me on YouTube as well under Model Gaming Show. This is uh, this is Model Gaming. This is the Model Gaming Show. This is the live show I usually do every Sunday, but because of E3, I've been doing it uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Again, this will be the last day. No, no uh, video game stream tonight. Won't have time, but I will be doing one tomorrow and Thursday to make up. And, uh, and I might do something on Friday as well, a longer one. But uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate anybody who catches this. And I hope you enjoyed E3. I hope you enjoyed uh, my opinions on everything and the coverage. I know it's the first time I'm doing something like this. And, um, you know, just kind, of, uh, just kind of winging it as it goes, trying to get it up as soon as possible. So, again, uh, thank you all very much for watching and have a good one.